Do you ever wish you could just bottle up the feeling of your dream life and live it every day? Well, what if that feeling isn't a far off fantasy, but a state that you can access right now? That's what we're talking about on today's episode, calling it Destination Sweet Spot, where I want to share some of the ways that you can live your most joyful, aligned, and intentional life starting today. Let's dive in. Welcome to the School of Self-Image, where personal development meets style. Here's your hostess, Master Life Coach, Tanya Lee. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? I just finished walking two miles on my desk treadmill, and it feels really good. You know, when you work from home and you work in front of a computer, you can find yourself just sitting way too much. And so I've been very intentional about getting my steps in. I want to stay in motion. I want to move more. I want to feel alive and vibrant. And turns out a desk treadmill is the answer. You can work and walk at the same time. I've just been feeling really good in general. I am feeling so content. I'm feeling so at peace. I'm feeling so excited about the future. I'm feeling healthier. I'm feeling vibrant. I feel like I'm in my sweet spot. And that's what I want to talk with you about today in this episode, the sweet spot and how to find yours. What is it and how do we get there? I like to think of the sweet spot as that place where you're living in the energy of already being there. And we all have a there. Now, some of you all haven't defined your there. You just know it's not here, but you're always thinking, oh, it's going to be so much better over there. Some of you have defined your there. You're very clear on where you want to go. You're very clear on the goals you want to accomplish, what you want to experience. And so you have that clarity. But the sweet spot is the energy of being in that place. And when you think about who you are in that place, what are the general feelings that you think you'll have when you are there? I want you to know that you can have those feelings in the here. And when I look back over the last few months of feeling like I've been in my sweet spot more and more, I've been more intentional about being in that feeling state than I was last year. Last year, you all, I was out of my sweet spot. In fact, I've probably been out of my sweet spot for a good couple of years. And it's not that I wouldn't go in and out of it during that time, but for the majority of that time, now looking back, things just felt off. I talk a lot about how life is like hot and cold, playing the game. As a kid, you would go seek that little treasure that was hidden. And the people in the room would tell you, oh, you're getting hotter, hotter, you're almost on fire. And then you would start moving away from it. And they'd be like, oh, you're getting cold. Oh, you're freezing. And that's what it feels like to navigate towards your sweet spot and what it feels like when you're out of it. And over the past couple of years, while I have had some sweet spot moments, but the majority of the time I was out of it, especially in my business. And you know what? That is 100% normal. You are not supposed to be in your sweet spot all of the time. In fact, I was coaching a client yesterday in the membership, and she was sharing with me how back in 2020, she was on fire. Everything was flowing. She was working towards her goals. She felt good. She was taking care of herself. She was in her sweet spot. Now, fast forward three years later, and she's out of it. She has noticed that she's not taking as good of care of herself. She's feeling a lot of pressure, a lot of hurry. And, you know, I explained to her, nothing's gone wrong here. What if this is normal? What if this is part of the process? Because what often happens is that we experience these highs and we love them. We, we, we enjoy them. We're like, oh, I want to stay here forever. And that's just not life, my friends. Because things happen, we get triggered, we experience grief, things outside of our control happen. And so it's not normal to stay in your sweet spot all of the time. But what happens often is that when you're out of the sweet spot, you begin to freak out. 
You begin to tell yourself things like, oh my God, that was just a fluke. I'll never get back there. This is going to be too hard. I'm thinking negative thoughts. Oh my God, I'm going to attract something negative. And it spins you further and further out of your sweet spot. You know, over the last two years when I've been out of my sweet spot, I've just relaxed into it. I've been curious with myself. I'm like, what's going on, Tanya? What are you thinking? Where have you been focusing? What have you been consuming? Where have you maybe strayed from your values? Where are you not being intentional? Who are you surrounding yourself with? I've been thinking a lot about those things. And little by little, I've been making tweaks to the point that now I feel like I'm back in my sweet spot. Now, had I freaked out and put a lot of pressure on myself to get back there and then indulged in the thoughts that I had about being out of my sweet spot, that is the energy that I could have been using to just be kind and curious with myself and to relax. Because the moment you relax when you're out of your sweet spot, guess what happens? You start moving towards it. You're one step closer. Because if you think about you and your sweet spot, is she freaking out? Is she upset that she's not where she wants to be? Is she beating herself up for being human? No. So the more you can do that when you're out of your sweet spot, the easier it is to get back into it. So how do we define our sweet spot? Well, I have created a worksheet for this purpose to help you figure out what your sweet spot is and how to live it daily. You can go to schoolofselfimage.com forward slash sweet spot, all one word, and go through this exercise. But I'm going to walk you through it. The first thing that you must do is you must decide what the end looks like. We are going to start at the end. We are going to begin to envision the life that you want. And I like to break it down in different areas. And you'll find all of this in the worksheet. But I want you to think about your career. I want you to think about your health. I want you to think about your relationships. And start there. Get clear on that vision. And don't get stuck here. Write down what comes to you. Because a lot of times what women will tell me is like, I don't even know how to envision. Well, you can think about what you know you don't want. You're probably very clear that you don't want to feel burdened. You don't want to feel discouraged. You don't want to experience certain things in your career. You don't want to experience certain things in your relationships. And knowing what you don't want is a beautiful thing because it's the jumping off point for you deciding what it is that you do want. So let's take me for example. So as I told you, the last couple of years in my business, I have felt like I've been out of my sweet spot. It started to feel really heavy. It started to feel like it wasn't really me. I'm just having a heart to heart right now, but this is how I best teach is to explain what I've been through and share with you how I've worked through it. So when I looked at, I didn't want heaviness. I didn't want to feel like it wasn't a true reflection of me. Then I started to ask myself, okay, I want it to feel lighter. I want it to feel fun again. I want it to feel aligned with me. And so then I started asking questions like, what does that look like? Where hasn't it felt aligned? What aren't you sharing that you want to share? What are you not talking about that you want to talk about? And so I just started writing down all of the things that I want in my business. And I started to get excited again. It, it hasn't even happened yet. In fact, there's going to be a lot of things happening in the future that I'm so excited about. But just visualizing it, just putting it on paper, just moving the focus from what I don't want and getting clear on what I do want, I started to get back into my sweet spot. Can you all see how that happens? But unfortunately, what a lot of people do is they just continuously focus on what they don't want. I don't want this. I don't want that. And what you focus on grows and it becomes bigger in your life. So while it's good to know what you don't want, and I think that's the purpose of being out of your sweet spot, it's to offer you that contrast. 
so that you can see, oh, well, I know I don't want this now. Okay, what do you want? And so for those of you who may be struggling with envisioning your future, let's just start with what you know you don't want anymore. And then let's look towards the opposite direction to see what's there and write it down. We want to start at the end. That's how you determine what your sweet spot is. And then once you've gone to the end and you have identified what your dream life will look like, and you can just go out a year from now, you can go out three years from now, whatever feels like a good stretch enough time for you. Then what we want to do is we want to look at what are you valuing in that sweet spot? What are your personal values that you're living by? Because I think that is often the reason why we don't feel like we're in our sweet spot because deep down our soul values one thing and we're living another. And so sometimes just adjusting your actions and your thinking and your way of being to what you value will get you right back into your sweet spot. So when I think about me being out of my sweet spot, one of my core values is connection. And I realize that now looking back, I was so busy connecting with the outside world that I had lost connection with myself and I could feel it. And so it's hard to connect with other people in a very authentic way if you're not connected to yourself. And so I was like, oh, we got to reconnect with you, Tanya. We got to get back to you. And so I started to have a daily practice of journaling again. I started doing my daily five journal, which is a part of the School of Self-Image membership and reestablishing that connection that I had not made a priority. I'd gone asleep in many ways in my life. And so you need to know what you value, what you really, really value, not what the world tells you to value, but what you truly value. I know my values are around connection, inspiration, beauty. Those are my top three values. I love to create beauty. I love to think in beautiful ways. I love to be inspired and inspire others. And I love connection. I love connection with my community. I love connection with the people I love. But listen, if I'm not connected with myself, it's very difficult to connect in that authentic way. And so you got to know what you value. You also need to know what your essence is. Your essence is that general state of being that you imagine yourself to be in at the end. This is how you're feeling the majority of the time. Now, every day is not rainbows and daisies. There are going to be times where you're not feeling gratitude or beautiful or confident. That's just normal. But When you're intentional, when you connect to yourself, when you are making this a daily practice, it can be your state of being the majority of the time, your overall essence that you walk through the world with. And so to know what your sweet spot is, you need to know what your vision is and then look inside that vision for the values that you're embodying and what your overall essence is. And then it's about creating that already there mindset. So to live out these values and to create this general essence for yourself, you must be intentional with how you think. You must be intentional with where you direct your attention, what you are putting focus on. The already mindset is available to you now. You don't have to wait until you're there to create that essence, to live by these values. It's available to you right now. And when you're in your sweet spot, you feel better. You're more motivated. You're more excited about your life. You feel more aligned. And you can imagine that when you feel this way, the way you show up is so much more powerful. And that's when opportunities start to arise. That's when you're making things happen. It's like you feel that you're caught up in this beautiful slipstream that's taking you to where you want to be because you are aligned. 
this is why our members love the Daily Five Journal, because it keeps them awake on a day-to-day basis. They are looking at how they're out of their sweet spot and they're making plans to get back into it and live it. This is a daily practice. This is not a one and done. This is not a place you get to. Because if we're not mindful, we do fall asleep in our lives. And we get further and further away from our sweet spot. Now, I want you to know, I teach this concept called a U-turn, Y-O-U. Every moment, I don't care how far you think you are from your sweet spot, every moment is a chance to turn back to you. And the worst thing that you can do when you're out of the sweet spot is tell yourself how far you're away from it, how you've let yourself go and beat yourself up. There's no upside to that. That just takes you further and further away from your sweet spot. Because when I think of you at the end, she's loving herself. She's compassionate with herself. She's being kind to herself. She's curious with herself. And you can start to do that now. And then beyond the already there mindset, you have to live it. I love to pay attention to myself when I am in the sweet spot. Sometimes we forget to do this. When we're in the sweet spot, we're like, oh, life is good. And we just enjoy every moment, which we should. But I love to investigate myself when I'm in the sweet spot. What am I thinking? What am I doing? What am I not doing? And then I also love to watch myself when I'm out of it. What am I thinking? What am I doing? What am I not doing? And love to compare the two. There are certain things that I know when I engage with, with my behaviors, with my actions, it takes me out of my sweet spot. For example, if I don't take care of myself, if I don't get movement in every day, if I'm not eating well, it takes me out of my sweet spot. If I'm watching the news, it takes me out of my sweet spot. There are certain people that when I'm around, I get out of my sweet spot. But I also notice the things that I do that put me into my sweet spot. I've been paying close attention to this. Like, When do I feel most alive and most excited? And it's when I'm in the world of art and design and certain types of personal development. There are certain types of personal development that takes me out of my sweet spot. And perhaps that's been one of the reasons why I was out of it for the past couple of years. I was too plugged into certain modalities that don't quite fit, but I was curious. I don't beat myself up at all for that. And it's not, no one else's fault. It's just not a match. That's the other thing we have to be careful not to do is to blame because for some people it is, and that's a beautiful thing, but for me, not so much. But we have to go out and explore. You have to go out and live the question, how else will you know? But a lot of times we get upset with ourselves and we go out and live a question and then it doesn't quite turn out the way we want to. But I applaud the fact that we have the courage to go out and do it. I think of one member in particular who had this big dream to move to another country and to become a writer and she did it. And it turns out it wasn't her sweet spot. It didn't feel great. Now, instead of beating yourself up over something like that, I want you to applaud yourself for having the audacity and the courage to go out there and try something new. Because a lot of times experiencing that contrast is going to help you get more and more clear about what you do want. And sometimes the only way to do that, my friend, is to go out and live it. A lot of you all are trying to figure it out at home with your brain that's afraid of making a mistake. You can see how you can slow your progress down. I'm all about experimenting. I think about when I moved to Puerto Rico for two weeks. A lot of people called that a failure. And I'm thinking, well, did you have the nerve to try it? No. I did. And I'm so glad I did. I got over there and I was like, oh, this isn't it. This isn't my sweet spot. It was so hard to think the way I wanted to think. I didn't feel like I was living according to my values. It was hard for me to be in the essence of how I wanted to feel there. And let me just say, Puerto Rico is a beautiful, beautiful place. The people are amazing. The food, incredible. It just wasn't a match for me. When I look back on my life, it has been a series of making a move, 
seeing how it feels, and course correcting. Moving towards what I think may be hot, trying it on and realizing, oh, this outfit is not looking good on me. Okay, that was a little cold. Let me go try on another outfit. Oh, this one looks a little bit better. Well, let me move towards that direction. It has been a series of playing hot and cold with my life. And that takes courage. A lot of times people don't want to do that because they don't want to fail. They don't want to make a bad mistake. But I don't see it as mistakes. I see it as living. I see it as having the courage and the confidence to go out there and try things so that you can get clarity. I think about what Marie Forleo says, clarity comes through action. You want to get clear, take action. See how it feels. See if it allows you to express what you deeply value. See if it helps you become more of who you want to be. And this is where I stray away a bit from like the law of attraction, because the law of attraction you know, the way it has been taught, which I think has been mistaught, is just sit around and think positive thoughts. I think we have to do more. I think life wants more from us. Yes, having a great mindset is at the core, but we got to go out and do things. We got to go out and try things and experiment. And so when you think about you at the end, when you think about that vision that the worksheet walks you through, Think about what you imagine yourself, not only thinking and feeling, but what are you doing and how are you doing it? Last year, I'll say around September, October, I can't remember exactly when, but I finally stopped because that's what's required to figure out what your sweet spot is. You got to stop. And that's hard to do sometimes, isn't it? Because you're thinking, if I stop, is it all going to fall apart? If I stop, who else is going to do it? And that's the kind of thinking that keeps you on this treadmill that's taking you nowhere, like my desk treadmill, although it is taking me somewhere. (laughs) I feel better, but that's not a great metaphor. Let's think about the train. It's the train that's taking you to where you don't want to go. And you have the power to stop the train. It's your train. You can stop it. And so I stopped and I got off the train and... I spent a lot of time thinking about my future. I started to you know, ask myself really powerful questions. What do you want more of? What do you crave? What do you want less of? What's working? What's not working? And I started to rebuild my vision. I started to get super clear on my business, my relationships, my, my health and my well-being, like all of it. And then I started to ask myself, what do you need to stop doing? What are you currently doing that isn't what you're doing in that vision? And I made some really tough decisions. Many of you know, if you've been listening to the podcast, I basically changed out my team, which was so hard to do because it was working, but it wasn't working in a way that felt aligned with where I wanted to go. And so I had to take that risk. But now on the other side of it, it's why I'm back in my sweet spot. I absolutely adore the team that I have now. And I adored my past team. But, you know, the saying is what got you here won't get you there. And this isn't a blame game. I just want to be clear. I am grateful for everyone that has had such a positive impact on my life. And there are seasons for people in your life. And that's okay. And that season was done. And so I made that change. The other really hard decision that I had to make was whether I was going to stay in a mastermind or leave it. Now, I want to say this. I love a mastermind. When it is done well, it is powerful. It is impactful. Deep connections are made. Life-changing experiences can come out of it. And when I thought about my future and the next season of my life, it became super clear that I needed to move on. And not because the people in this mastermind aren't incredible, because they are, but it just wasn't a fit for the season. And that was so hard to do. I could feel my FOMO kicking in, I could feel all the things, but I've learned if I make decisions out of fear, it only leads to more fear. It leads me further away from my sweet spot. 
when I sat with my intuition, my intuition was telling me it's time to go. I want to spend more time at home. (laughs) I never thought I would say that. I always thought, give me a plane ticket and I am there. But I'm in a different season now. And that's the thing. Your sweet spot's going to change in terms of how you get there. It used to be getting on a plane put me in my sweet spot. But right now during the season, I don't want to travel as much. I want to be home. I want to create roots. I want to be with my family and friends that are close by and also make time for those who aren't so close, but not at the point and at the level I was doing it before. And so that meant saying goodbye to this mastermind as well as I'm going to be leaving another one. Now, these are the hard decisions that have to be made. Now, will there be masterminds in the future? Maybe. There may be a point where my brain and my soul and my body is saying, you know, you need that mastermind. Get back into your sweet spot. But right now, I had to leave it to get into it. Life is fluid, you all. What works now for you may not work a year from now. And that's why you have to stay awake. You have to stay connected with yourself. To live in your sweet spot, you have to honor your truth. Think about that. You have to honor what is true for you. And why don't we do that? And oftentimes it comes down to fear. Fear of what other people will think. Fear if you disappoint people. Fear that you might miss out. And a life built on fear is not a well-lived life. When I was doing this work last year and really thinking about my vision, looking into the future, looking at what I'm feeling, what values I'm living, um, the kinds of people I'm around, what I'm doing, how I'm showing up, I thought about my past and I was looking for clues. Like when in my past have I felt aligned with my sweet spot? Now, what's really interesting in my relationship with my man, I feel like I'm in my sweet spot. I've never been in a relationship that just feels so easy and so fun and so full of respect and so full of just everyday enchantment. We both love to enjoy our lives. And that area feels solid. And then when it comes to my health and wellness, I've definitely been moving towards my sweet spot, even last year. So the big area that it was clear to me that I was out of my sweet spot with was my business, which I've already mentioned. And so what I did is I started to look to the past. Now, y'all know I don't like to live in the past, but the past can hold some clues. And so I started to think about when I felt like I was in my sweet spot in my business. In fact, I told Fonz this morning, I was like, I'm about to record a podcast on the sweet spot. And he was like, well, tell me when you did feel like you were in your sweet spot. And I'm like, I'm so glad you asked because that was a part of my process. So when I think back to when I felt like I was in my sweet spot the most in my business, are y'all ready for this? It was parts of the French Kiss Life days. Yeah, been reminiscing about French Kiss Life. Now, I also feel like there were parts of that brand that I was out of my sweet spot. So I have no regrets at all. The school of self-image is my love now. But we can bring certain things along and choose to leave certain things behind. And I realized there were certain things that I didn't bring along that I miss. For example, talking about luxurious living, talking about the stuff that I often get accused of of being superficial, but I also see how it has like the biggest effects on women's lives when they have the permission to light a candle, to dress beautifully, to cherish the body that they have to elevate their every day, to live more elegantly, to style their days with intention. And although that is still a part of the school of self-image, I wasn't talking about it and I haven't been talking about it in the same way that I did 
all those years ago. And some of you all probably know that. You can feel it. Some of you, well, you're not here because you left (laughs) when I started the School of Self-Image because you missed that part of it. And I get it. I totally get it. Now, some of you came along because you loved the direction that I was taking the business. All of that to be said, it's not either or. As I just said, the school of self-image is my love. Self-image is my work in the world. When I think about self-image, it's all about a woman's joyful reinvention. But maybe it was the joy that I had not brought along. And I realized I want to bring that back. And just saying that, because I feel so joyful in my everyday life. And I want to put more of that essence into the school, into the memberships, more of the fun, more of the joie de vivre, more of the elegance. And just getting clear on that, I could feel myself moving back towards my sweet spot. Now, I've been a part of a lot of masterminds, and I've been around a lot of people in this space, and these are the conversations that are missing. Because I feel like some of you, maybe a lot of you, look at the outside, and you don't see the inside of what people are going through. You don't see the part where something feels misaligned. You just see what appears to be working and working well. And while it may be working well on the outside, We never know how someone's feeling as they're producing it. And I always want to stay awake with that. And I know as a human being, I'm going to get off course. I will get out of my sweet spot. But with these tools, I know I can get back in them. And I applaud myself for the willingness to go out and try new things, to see if it's going to work, to see how it feels. It's just like an outfit. You can see it hanging on the mannequin, and you can think, ah, that looks so good. But until you try it on, you don't know if it's going to look good on you. And life is a lot like that. And that's what it feels like to live into your sweet spot. You have to put the outfits on and it may look fabulous. But what if it doesn't? That's okay. At least you had the courage to go and try it. Now, if we want to keep with this analogy, what I have noticed is that you begin to get a sense, a really good sense of what looks good on you. You get a really good sense of the fit, the colors, maybe even the designers that work really well for you. And so you will make less and less quote unquote mistakes because you'll already know. Because you've tried it before. You're like, no, I know that's not going to look good on me. It looks good on her life, but not on mine. But to do that, you have to try a lot of clothes on, a lot of outfits. You have to understand who you are. You have to understand your body. And that's what the sweet spot is like. It requires a lot of reflection about what do I really want? Not what the world tells me I should want, but what do I want? What do I value? What is my true essence? Beneath all of the worry and the anxiety and the doubt and the insecurity, like what is the essence of my soul? Because that other stuff is just limiting beliefs that we need to clean up. But below all of that, beyond the layers, who are you really? And then when you get clear on that, then you begin to ask yourself, like, how do I live this out in my daily life? A woman who her essence is bold and she values family, like what is she doing? If your essence is peaceful and you value adventure, what does peaceful adventure look like for you? And begin to live out your sweet spot now. Begin to make those daily choices that align with what you deeply value Begin to show up in the world in your truest essence. And when you move out of your sweet spot, as you will, because you're human, know this, nothing has gone wrong. That is part of the process. Relax into it. Stay curious with yourself. Look at what changed. Look at 
what you started doing, what you stopped doing that maybe created that situation where you got out of your sweet spot. Look at how maybe your thinking changed, how maybe you've made some decisions that don't align with your values and learn the lessons of being out of your sweet spot because this is life. Again, you're not meant to be in your sweet spot all of the time. Life is about contrast. And being out of your sweet spot, do you know what it does? It just makes you appreciate it so much more when you're in it. Because if you're always in your sweet spot, would you even know that you're there? Would you get bored of it? Probably. But what I know to be true is that when you have the tools that we teach within the School of Self-Image, when you are making an effort to stay connected with yourself daily, what you'll notice is that Number one, when you get out of your sweet spot, you don't sweat it. You're like, oh yeah, being a human today, let me just be curious. And you'll have the tools to get back in it so much more quickly. And if you're out of it for a year or two, or maybe even a decade, every moment is a chance to do a U-turn. Nothing's gone wrong. That's just part of the experiment. That's just part of the game. It's part of the ride. What if you learn to embrace the lows as much as you crave the highs. Really think about that. You know, when I think over the last couple of years, when I was like, oh, things aren't feeling right. (laughs) One of the things I'm really proud of myself for is I didn't fight it. I just embraced it. I'm like, oh, this is part of the, the journey for me. And I want you to do the same. And the moment you do that, you start to move back towards it. And sometimes you get there quickly and sometimes you have a lot of resistance to work through. It's all okay. Nothing's gone wrong. What I know right now is I'm so happy and I'm so appreciating being back in my sweet spot. And it's really interesting because I am there in my mind, in my body, in my essence. I feel like I'm there, but you may not see it yet. And that's often how it works. You don't see the results until later until it's had time to be created. And that's when a lot of you all give up. I think about this with my weight loss clients. You know, they're feeling good, they're inspired, they're making good choices, but the scale's not showing it yet, or their pants don't, you know, they're not loose yet. And they just start moving out of that state, out of their sweet spot, never allowing the results to catch up with them. I think about my business right now. I'm over here feeling it. I feel good. I'm excited. I am so inspired. And yet the outside world hasn't caught up yet. And what I mean by that, like the projects that are now coming from this new energy, like we are in creation mode. Now, if I looked around and I use the outside world as a barometer of, should I feel this way? I would go right back to being out of my sweet spot. But I know this to be true. The reason why we want anything is because of the feeling that we think having that thing will give us. And so when I think about what I deeply crave in my business right now, I'm plugged into me. I'm not looking outside of me. I'm looking inside. I'm doing a lot of envisioning, a lot of journaling. I'm staying in that energy, trusting that this soul expression is going to be revealed. It's going to manifest. It's going to be created. All I have to do is stay plugged in and connected to that vision and living in that already there mindset. Now, will there be days when I get out of it? A hundred percent. I'm human, but I know I'm going to move back into it more quickly because I'm being more intentional in my life than I've ever been. And it feels so good. Now, Are you ready to discover your sweet spot? Yeah? Okay. All you have to do is go to schoolofselfimage.com forward slash sweet spot, all one word, sweet spot, and download the sweet spot playbook. I hope you all have an amazing week playing your way to your sweet spot. And I look forward to seeing you on next week's episode. Cheers. Before you go, let me ask you something. Are you feeling stuck? Like you're running in place, but never really getting anywhere? What I want you to know is that there's nothing wrong with you. You are not broken. 
but your approach probably is. If you're ready to stop making the same mistakes, engaging in the same behaviors, and discover the key to unstoppable momentum, join me for my free masterclass called Powerfully Ever After, where I reveal three hidden shifts that will crack open your potential and unlock your dream life. Stop settling for almost or someday. This is your chance to create your Powerfully Ever After. You can go to schoolofselfimage.com forward slash after and join now. It's free, it's fast, and most importantly, it's fun. I'll see you in the class.